so guys, this is my dark spot and I am super stoked to finally meet Oliver from A Place to Bear Strangers. So hi, Oliver, and how are you today? Hi. Good. I'm doing great. Yeah, it's a good day over here in New York. So uh, yeah, nice. I'm doing good. I'm kind of jealous because I like New York so much, but <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah, happy. It's... I'm happy that you're feeling fine. And uh, can you tell me something a little bit more about the band? Because probably there will be people, you know, who will just uh, starting to get to know the band. Just something briefly, you know, so they can catch up. Yeah, we are a, a band from New York, which is like three really great friends who play some of the most intense music you'll ever hear uh pouring straight from our hearts and um uh trying to throw the most wildest shows that anyone's ever seen and uh yeah you know it's, people often call us the loudest band in the world and i don't know uh, if that's true or a good thing or not but um we're definitely a few maniacs so Yeah. That's all good if you ask me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I always say as long as you are feeling it, like uh, I, I'm that kind of a person. Like, who cares if someone yeah. is going to like it or not? As long as you're feeling it and vibing sure. with each other, like through everything else. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Let's have a good time. Yeah. You know, that's good. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. I definitely I saw one of your shows, but I, I will come to it later. Yeah, to discuss it a bit more. Uh, so I can testify definitely. And uh, tell me about that uh, that thing people often mention. Speaking of you, like the loudest band in New York, how does it make you feel? And uh, what unique challenges does this uh, present for the band? You know, in terms of your live performances or recording process. Uh, I mean, you know, we've just played at really loud volumes for kind of so long and then just really love it. I want to be able to like feel the music and feel what's going yeah. on and then really be doing something that's sort of like transformative in front of people. And to kind of do that, then you need the whole range of uh, as loud as whatever you've brought with you can possibly go and as loud as the sound system can go. That's such like an interesting moment when you get like so excited And you're kind of like so in love that you just completely lose yourself. And yeah. I think that's uh, a fun, incredible experience. And we definitely love that. So try to take, you know, as many moments as you can to those moments. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I definitely I, I have a note for myself and maybe some other people like uh, things we do lately, like we are often trying to record as much as possible, like, oh, my God. I'm finally seeing my favorite band, like, and then, like, what the fuck I did? <laughs> you know what I mean? Why sure. did I do that instead of just being present at the moment and, like, feeling it? I think that, yeah. you know, ruined the experience. Like, I'm just kind of recording. But then again, on the other hand, wait, but I I'm recording it. I was there. I want to, you know, like, if I get uh, dementia yeah, or something. I, I, I know, for sure. You want to remember those things and it can kind of bring you back. It's like yeah. a memory of that. So yeah, it definitely. can be cool. You know, maybe just take turns with your friend recording stuff or something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so that's why I, lately I just like, I kind of, uh, you know, take a short break from the recording and just enjoy the music. Anyway, people, we record it on YouTube. So, you know. <laughs> yeah you can always yeah. look back on that stuff and remember those moments you don't need to record yeah. it just enjoy yourself in those moments exactly. put it on your phone leave your phone at home and exactly. just hang out with your friends that's right yeah and when you said that when you were mentioning how you feel about being the you know loudest band in new york i remember something that jeffrey Lee pierce said back then you know when they appeared back then i think in 90s uh, sorry 80s it was uh, 80s if i if i remember yeah And uh, yeah, he was telling that he was just uh, trying to make a big mess. You know, people go crazy and do crazy stuff, something like that. But it it, it went even worse. What you said, I just don't want to say it. Sure. People yeah. may, might get right. You don't know the wrong message. What do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, I think that's an important thing. Like we all need to kind of let go. It's like so yeah. often you're kind of like within these constraints and you're kind of worried about, you know, what you do here and there. And 
you know, there's a time and a place for that kind of stuff. You know, you don't want to okay. just maybe go like piss on your neighbor's <laughs> doorstep or something, you know, but if there's an opportunity, which is like really fun, yeah. you know, and it involves urinating somewhere, hey, whatever, you know, sometimes you got to do it. Um, But, exactly. you know, I think that it's like, you know, that's what you sort of want to do is you want to let go. You want to be free. You want to just, um, you know, forget about all of the things that you're worried about. There's all these like, kind of systems in place to make your life work out and make it easy and you know judge you based on like how your what your worth is and all this stuff and all that stuff yeah. is just a bunch of crap you know we're I all know. Like a bunch of kind of you know animals who just want to have a good time so if there's like a venue and a place to do this and you're around people that you're comfortable with is what you should always kind of aspire to do then I think it's a great thing to be able to like get free and, you know, do that yeah i like what you said you know because uh lately i uh you know become pretty much depressed and everything and i was just and i kind of figure out that uh pretty much music you know keeps me alive and going to concerts and uh, you know why because uh you know you just live at that moment where everything is perfect why because people are focused on music and not not, not bullshit like not too much bullshit there you know Either totally. there is more speed or whatever, depending on the band. And you kind of have a feeling that everything is perfect for a moment in all that imperfection and mess. But like no judging. It's just like that vibe that makes yeah, you feel you, alive. Yeah, you really become one with the moment of what's happening. Yeah. Right there. That's what's and, important about live music and stuff, I think. Yeah. It, you know, but yeah. that's why people like entertainment of all sorts in the arts. You know, you can get lost in a painting or get lost in watching a cool film or a book or something. And yeah. these things. But when you're there at a show, it's definitely like it's like a book on a roller coaster or something. Exactly. I think, you know, yeah. where there's yeah. that like you're kind of like forced to be immersed in this you know dream scenario and, and that, you that's feel free. A really incredible thing. Yeah. you really do feel free for a you change know? yeah you do yeah you can scream and nobody looks at you like what the hell are you doing or whatever it's great so <laughs> yeah and the, but the worst thing after that is like then the reality slaps you in the face so like welcome to the reality bitch you know <laughs> oh yeah exactly time to go home yeah you know? Never, <laughs> yeah, exactly. But yeah. you know, that's okay though. It's like, you know, there's there's all sorts of different things that are like, you know, good about different things. Mellow times are fine and stuff too. You just need to have some of those exciting, thrilling moments, I think. And you know, it's but that's even like just saying yes and going and going doing all sorts of things. Exactly. You know, I think it's important to just be open to like get yourself in a different kind of situation and that's yeah. what's good about going to traveling to different places and things. It's like you're kind of put in someone else's world. And I think that kind of is, uh, I don't know, a, a, an, an exciting thing and a neat thing to kind of be a part of. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And I'm super happy, you know, to hear that you will come here to my country again, because uh, sadly, a lot of bands uh, are not able to come. I don't, I don't want to enter their reasons. Not sure what's going on, logistics or whatever, politics, whatever. So, you know, I, I travel to Budapest or Romania. And yeah. I, I, I'm happy to do that, you know, when I want to see the band. But I'm so stoked to see you again. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> we're so excited to come back. We have always had the best time, you know, yeah. so it's really great. Um, uh, And I think that, you know, it's important to kind of touch those different areas of the world and be in those places. Like there's yeah. cool people like yourself who live all over the place, you Thank know? You, yeah. So, uh, you know, it's like, you, you know, I, I come from like a small town is where I kind of grew up. And so, you know, you feel sort of so out of touch with the world or something in some kind of ways, but, you know, we're all just a bunch of people sort of trying to get along and stuff. And we all have our own different experiences and, you know, these kind of thrills and joys and stuff. And it's great to share that stuff. Yeah, of course. Yeah, that's very cool of you to say that. I like that. Yeah. And tell me about the sound of your band. Uh, like, it's kind of described as noise rock and shoegaze, like something in between, you know. But of course, I think there is much more to that. Like, you cannot put bands into two genres when it's total craziness when you hear, like, there, there is a lot to it, you know. 
But how do you balance do those two seemingly, you know, different kind of genres and, uh, you know, uh, make uh, something unique with your music? Is it a challenging process? I mean, you know, it probably doesn't help us that we're not like defined by one thing or the other, but we don't really care. Of course, you know, yeah. it's like we're, we're doing like, uh, you know, what comes straight from the heart and, you know, what is the music that, you know, is natural to us. And I think that, you know, sometimes as a musician, you can have like doubts and you can have questions of whether this is the right thing or that is the right thing or should I do this or should I do that? And it's best to, um, you know, not do anything but for the reasons of like your own pure kind of self and follow what it is that you want to do. Like exactly. any situation could be good or could be bad. You know, yeah. any choice you make could be good or could be bad. You know, you shouldn't beat yourself up over, you know, the times you make bad decisions. You know, just kind of, I think, you know, we're exploring this kind of music that we really like. And I'm curious as to, you know, where these different things go or what these different sound combinations or, you know, to share my experience as a person and, you know, what kind of experiences we have. And so these, and it's even, you know, as you were saying too, music is like therapy too. You know, all of these different things kind of come into play and it just becomes its own sort of like living, breathing uh, thing. And, um, you know, we're just going with what is sort of natural with that. Like it could, you know, as anything, it could be fragile and it could end or something, or it could change and turn into something different, yeah. you know, but like this is like what is really exciting to us, you know, exactly. and exciting to me. And so, you know, there's an example of that. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's also very nice. I, I think the same way too, you know, it's just like you go with that flow and uh, also, as, as you said, it's some kind of a therapy to other people and people sometimes just don't get it because other people who probably, you know, they, they cherish other genres, maybe they be like, oh, like, no wonder why you're so depressed. You always like all those dark stuff, you know, and yeah. I'm like, well, you know what? I cannot really, you know, listen some kind of pop or something when I really need that. I need to relate to yeah. something to feel it. Yeah. That's a cure to me. And it's really... Uh, maybe it's it's kind of weird, you know, to say that, but I really feel that like, okay, uh, someone else is feeling the same way I do. Like you have some kind of a comfort in that, right? Yeah, for me, it's like so healing, you know, this yeah. kind of music and like a lot of darker music and things, you know, you listen yeah. to some other music and maybe it makes you like clean your house really quick or something. But like what yeah. really like, you know, touches me is like, this kind of like dark music and it's like I can relate to it you know those moments when you're like really down and those are you know like a a, a rope or a safety net or something to kind of like yeah. you know find me have, have comfort in this music and you know have somebody who's kind of feeling this stuff and it's you know I don't know it's like there's something like really even rooted and personal about music yeah. kind of so deep and so core it's like you know you are like uh you know talking to yourself or something or it's exactly. like you know something which is really uh i don't know kind of comforting and really needed at least for me as a person and it sounds yeah. like you too yeah i I just i would like the uh certain people that are very close to me uh, you know i just uh, wish them to realize that it, that's the only thing that keeps me alive no matter how dark it is it's just <laughs> ironically but yeah like <laughs> you know <laughs> <laughs> and uh, tell me something about actually I would like to know uh, about your day in the studio how does it look like I suppose uh, it's a lot of fun and jamming but uh, you're doing great things I mean with your music and your you know performances how how, how do you manage the balance between chilling and recording and uh, you know everything having fun other jobs <laughs> Yeah, it's, you know, it's pretty wild. You just sort of take whatever you kind of can when you can. Yeah. You know, so uh, being in New York, there's like a lot of different things going on. So you end up going to go doing a lot of stuff and you just kind of have to be open to putting yourself into like a slightly uncomfortable situation or things not working out or being this or that or disappointing people and stuff. So um, you know, sometimes when I wake up early in the morning, I'm starting to play music. Sometimes it's really late at night. Sometimes in the middle of the day, you'll have some sort of idea. You know, we're always over here at the pedal company, kind of like making a lot of stuff. And so 
that's like you know you can see some of the people working in the background oh cool and, and, and they're like you know like working and doing this stuff and then um you know sometimes it changes you're helping other people kind of like record some things and do some stuff and uh you know you just sort of I don't know go with the wind or something I guess in some ways it's like you could potentially you know work harder on something and but that's always going to be sort of the case and you just you know um I don't know I love working on music so for me that is like a break from doing other things as well too so uh yeah. you you can just sort of I think stay focused on things which are like either with other people or like being kind of productive in some sort of way then that's kind of positive and I try to do those things you know like when you sort of do it's easy to kind of like I don't know spend some time doing something that you don't really need to do or like you know, on your browsing on Instagram or some sort of thing or something. So yeah. do that less and I think you'll be a happier person. Yeah, definitely. I agree. I agree with that. Yeah, but uh, how do you recharge your energy, you know, when you feel like totally drained from work and other people and you just have to, you know, how uh, Charles Bukowski said, I, I always speak to that, you know, like I really have to get away from other people, not because I don't like them, but because like it's a draining process, uh, you know, to just communicate sometimes. Like you, you are already down, and you know, you know, you just, uh, you just, just like losing your energy. You you have to refill it. So what do you do, uh, you know, when you can when you come to that kind of a moment? I think you just need to switch gears and sort of do something else. Yeah. You know? And I think it's like, you know, all sorts of things you kind of get tired of and, you yeah. know, you can get tired of your situation and you get tired of, you know, your job and all of these kinds of things. And, um, you know, it's, you know, look forward to kind of changing what you're doing and do something else. And I think if you're sort of doing a lot of different things and that's sort of can kind of become a distraction or an excitement where the different things sort of build off of each other. You yeah. know, and so I think that makes you have more of a good time just as a person. And, you know, if you spend all your time just kind of sitting there making music, then you'll get kind of maybe depressed that, you know, you weren't doing something else or, you yeah. know, you don't kind of get sort of a balance. So if if you can, you know, I'm I'm lucky, I'm sort of involved in a lot of different things. So it's easy for me to change back and forth. But you know, you definitely find yourself like hanging out with people that, you know, maybe, you know, you don't want to hang out with anymore or something. And so that's yeah. okay. Hang out with some other people or, or you can be mad at someone or you can be bored and just find something else to do, you know? And yeah. I think that's why even some of those things like books and stuff exist. It's like a way to sort of get lost or exactly. going to a show. Like you can kind of just transform into someone else and live like a different life for a moment. And uh, I do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's especially, cool. you know, books and uh, I mean, generally books, music, uh, movies, whatever, going yeah. to some like more isolated place in nature. I just, I just need to chill. I learned that from uh, one friend of mine. He told me oh, like cool. 10 years ago, like he told me like, whatever you do, like, it doesn't matter if you like it or like engage in some really cool activity. You really need to find an hour just for yourself to sort out your thoughts. And that's the best advice I've ever got. I think you it's know. really good. I think, you know, yeah. and I think sometimes we're so like on the go and flooded with things that we yeah. don't give ourselves a moment to think, you know? And yeah. so like, I even really like, in New York, like there's lots of, you know, taking the subway very often, you know, so there's lots of like moments where you're kind of like on your own and sort of navigating around and just kind of, you know, thinking yeah. about all sorts of different things and different things pop up in your head. And, and I think that's really cool. There was a friend of mine who um, was uh, like a, a bicycle, a cyclist. And yeah. they said that they they would always go on these trips and they always listen to music. And they went on this one trip and like they forgot their iPod or something. And they were oh. so bummed, you know, but then they said after they cycled for like days or something or hours that eventually their head was just filled with all this music that they were like kind of remembering and coming up with in their head. And it just was like so neat, you know, it's like 
yeah, sometimes you think like, oh, I need to be entertained or, oh, I need to do this or I need to do that. But I think your body is even capable of doing a lot of that stuff. Yeah, like, definitely. That, that. Yeah, that was a good one. Definitely. Just we, It's just like about addictions. Like we have probably many addictions, but you cannot try to see how, like how I'm going to function without it. Let's try. Maybe it's going to be hard yeah. in the beginning, but then later maybe you get some new insight, you know, right? Yeah, yeah th th that's really true. It's like, I, you know, I feel that way too. It's like sometimes you don't want to not do that thing that you're so accustomed to, but yeah. you got to just do that. It's good to break habits. It's good to break addictions, you know, because why do you want to be like tethered to some like corporation or something, you know, which is like trying to get you to smoke cigarettes all the time or something. Yeah. If you're like free of that, it, and you could smoke cigarettes just when you want to, then I feel like that's, I don't know, a cooler kind of thing or something, or just, you know, I don't know if you can manage to do that stuff. It definitely seems hard and you want that safety net, but um, you know, I think that that's, you know, you for, then forget about smoking cigarettes and you forget exactly. that you even had those kind of thoughts or, you know, or whatever it is, or, you know, I stopped eating breakfast recently and it's, it's a hard thing to do. You know, you're I was so used to just waking up and eating breakfast, but then I had a friend who said he doesn't eat breakfast. And I was like, you know what, let me try to do that. And I think it's just a matter of it's over your mind to not eat breakfast. Yeah. You know, like, I don't know if you really, I thought I needed that, you know, so desperately, like you wake up so hungry, but if you just kind of push it off, you can kind of forget about it. I don't yeah. Know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I see, I see. That works for you, yeah. But uh, yeah, sometimes minds can play tricks on us, like you know, yeah. like oh my god, I'm I'm so hungry, I'm going to pass out. No, you're yeah. not, because you get used to eat that much, and you're tripping that you have to take for that sure. much food. But you're yeah, like don't. addicted to sugar and all of that kind of stuff. You yeah. know, you think you're like, I gotta have that candy, you know, or I I want dessert, you know, or whatever it is, you know, you kind of. <laughs> yeah don't do that for a while sometimes you just forget all about it or something or yeah. you know you don't really have the opportunity to when you're taking some food that somebody just gives you or something yeah. you know you can enjoy it like you know I don't know sometimes it's like you get so used to even things like these elaborate meals being so delicious but when you're really hungry you'll eat something that's not that tasty exactly. you know it's fine sometimes too you know yeah. so I don't know the key is to, you know, to take a lot of uh, liquid and uh, yeah, that will, yeah. that will stop you from, that will prevent that's, that's you from eating. Truth. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's so true. Wise yeah. words. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Let's go to the other one. So tell me more about your intense and sometimes disorienting kind of shows. Uh, I'm interested to know uh, more about that and uh, tell me about the approach about those, you know, visual experiences and what kind of role does the technology play in that one? Yeah, I mean, we use whatever uh, technology that we can kind of get our hands on and what also makes sense to kind of travel with. Yeah. So we made lots of films and videos and then try to project them and it's all been in done in different ways over throughout the years whether it be off of like ipods or 16 millimeter film or people's phones or dvd players or all sorts of different things um, or slide machines and you know i think that something kind of like magic happens when you're projecting images like through smoke and stuff you know it's like really kind of like disorienting and really kind of amazing and yeah you know, you're sort of like taking something that you know, it has like one dimension and turning it into like a three-dimensional object or something, which is kind of cool. And um, and then moving all those different elements around during a show, I think does so many different interesting things and kind of becomes disorienting. And, you know, it sort of makes it be where part of the experience is like the imagination of the people who are even involved and in this experience. And for me personally, I also really like to be disoriented when playing and I like to be able to like let go and not be able to think of anything else than I don't even know what really, but just be in that moment of like completely experiencing and you're kind of like, you know, your adrenaline is really high and you're sort of almost like climbing out of a hill or something or, you know, or I don't know what, or just when you've completely let go and you're sort of 
you're you're like kind of trusting in what is going to happen as well as still kind of like constantly pushing yourself deeper and deeper and deeper into this thing so as the years have even gone on you know the shows you know we even try to push them even further and further and further and they get kind of crazier and more wild yeah. and more insane and you're exploring the sounds of you know what is beyond what the sounds you've already heard and the visuals are beyond what the visuals of what you've already experienced and stuff so um i think it becomes kind of interesting you know what that ends up turning into and um especially too when you're sort of like exploring and going off and reflecting on sort of like what your own doing and trying to like push yourself further and trying to push an idea further, then at some point it's almost like a weird fractal or something. Like yeah. you don't even know where the original idea necessarily came from yeah. and you don't even know what it was like exactly like five years ago or something. And where you're at now is like always just trying to do whatever, honing what it is that you're doing to something even better and greater. And so um, I don't know. Sometimes people will say, like, you know, how has your show, you know, changed yeah. from 10 years or something? And I don't, you know, it's hard to even say exactly. Like, you cannot, just, yeah. yeah. Sorry, I interrupted. You cannot no, no, easily sorry. get back into that time from this perspective, right? It's not easy to transfer to that period, right? Maybe. You know, yeah, it's, it's right? always just like a memory of those things, too. So you're kind of yeah. like playing like a weird game of telephone with yourself or something yeah. to kind <laughs> yeah. of do this. But I do feel like that there's something that is um, important and powerful that like we've kind of kept on yeah. going all these years, you yeah. know, and something. So it's like, I think it is like a, um, I don't know, like a true line of where this stuff will go, yeah. you know a true constantly kind of building experience you it's know there wasn't a, like a yeah, moment a, where we like stopped for five years or 10 years and then tried to like get ourselves back into this thing yeah. you know we're like creating something right now still fresh and these ideas of like these new songs and these new things have like current day meaning for us you yeah. know so it's kind of i think interesting um you know, to have those sort of things. It's not like we're just playing off of an old dream of ourselves. You know, it's like we're creating something right now that is that I'm emotionally connected to at this moment. Yeah, that's that's really impressive. And you know, when I uh, when I was speaking to some of my friends because I told them that you were going to come again, I was like, okay, we are going. You know, I'm so, organizing the crew, and I was like, okay, but first, carefully, I want you to listen to the band, like uh, take a look at their shows, there. and they'd be like, oh my god, okay, this is so good, but how do they manage to play like with those intense strobes and lights, like? I mean, how do they do that? And I was like, well, that's a good question. I'm just going to ask them. <laughs> oh, yeah, there you go. Because yeah. it's, it's super scary. Because, you know, recently I have seen some shows people uh, were wearing some masks and they can hardly breathe, but they're all just like, you know, playing drums, singing, everything, but no room to breathe. But this is even maybe more scary but because you uh, need to stay just a bit focused, like, you know, at least on playing. You know, you have to, you know, just, do you have at least that kind of <laughs> focus you know and all the rest is you know just craziness imagination and everything that you just get into at the moment but how do you do you you able how are you able to manage all that you know I mean, it's it's, in, it's insane really it's so yeah. tough it's like at every yeah. show you push yourself as hard as you possibly can be pushed yeah but you know, as like we were saying before you know with like music and stuff like you get you know, and that's what you want to do. You get lost in this experience. Yeah. yeah. So, you, so you really kind of do things that you wouldn't normally do. You know, that's yeah. what like the adrenaline and all of these things are happening. That's kicking in happens is, you know, we can play shows where it's like right in the beginning. You're like, this is like so and i'm so tired it's so hot it's so insane and you're like you know what but this is so cool we gotta you know make this moment you yeah. know take it to the next level and bring it even you know more and so it's like i think that it becomes a really special thing when music is involved because it has this effect on people 
you know, and as the yeah. performers too, where they have this connection and you can even see it when you go see artists who are like really giving it their all when they're performing, they yeah. have that connection with the music. It's, you know, really real to them and doing this stuff to where, you know, they, it's, it's almost like you're even kind of struggling as to like what you're supposed to do, but you yeah. know, it's like, you know, it's got to match the way you feel about this. Exactly. So it's like, you know, who knows? You could be like crying, screaming, you know, pushing at whatever is like, you know, trying yeah. your your most to kind of convey this kind of feeling. And uh, it's for something pretty wild and kind of special. Yeah, just you just have to release all that energy, you know, because yeah. sometimes I have a feeling lately I was discussing that with one of the bands. Um, like sometimes people think that music should be, you know, should be should uh, sound like this or that, but no, 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 no. This, this is uh, all that I mean, music is art, right? All this is too much limiting. Do you have a feeling that lately music became a little bit, you know, uh, let's say not really that open to experimenting, or do or you feel the opposite? Do you feel like that uh, many people have that? kind of a feeling how it should sound and look like and everything else. I mean, there's a lot of things going on, you know, where yeah. it's like, you know, part of it is, is where, you know, people want it's business, you know, so people yeah. are going to make things like music for a lot of people into a business and yeah. how can they sustain that business? And so people make different decisions based on that, yeah. you know? So then you've got, you know, there's a lot of data out there. It's really lame, but it's like, you know, people are realizing like what songs people listen to more and yeah, 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 yeah. that and what are the reasons why they listen to that and all this stuff that's really pretty lame, you know, but that's okay. It's like, I think for people who like really truly love music and, you know, it really means something sort of similar to a special as it does to me, it's like, those are, these are people who are searching for something else and, you know, not everybody's into that. I get that. You know, most people you walk on the street and you see, you know, music isn't their life. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're something else is what they're really passionate about. And and that's yeah. really cool too. But, you know, and so that's fine if they hear the latest like pop music, which just helps them do whatever it is that they're doing or something like that. I mean, you know, I, I happen to love music so much that I'm, you know, kind of involved in it as much as possible. And I think some of the people who are making music who are also on the forefront of making music and pop music are being really experimental with things, but yeah. it's also a combination of the, those, those things. And, you know, so, you know, there's like some extreme experimentation, but they also realize you know, what maybe will make a great pop song or something. And yeah, I think that's even what's, a, you know, a saving uh, thing for these bands that aren't the hugest bands in the world and kind of a cool thing. It's like, those are those kind of shows that are like awesome and intimate and really cool. Like I love going yeah. to a show at a place where you can walk right up to the band, you know, and yeah. hear the different things and see them sweat and what's happening and all of that and really get immersed and connected with that experience. And I think that, you know, that only exists when the bands aren't extremely popular. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, it becomes this other sort of thing. So I think it's, you know, all of those different worlds are like really cool. And I think everyone should experience those live concerts if they can at, you know, some DIY space or some smaller spaces or where things are kind yeah. of really happening because you're seeing something really beautiful. I mean, that's even like, you know, it's not like everyone, you know, only has like Xerox copies of like Picasso on their wall or something. Yeah. You know? There's all sorts of cool art and different things which connect to different people. So, uh, you know, I think... um you know, that's, that, that's really cool. And that's the way things are. And if people want to focus on an algorithm and focus on Spotify plays and Instagram hype and all this stuff, then let those people focus on that stuff. Exactly. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. But I love that the, the way you look at things It's like, just like I look at things uh, recently, I have seen uh, some black metal band and they, they had a show at the boat and I was like, this is going to be good. And plus they have all those masks. I was telling you about, oh, yeah, cool. and I was like, I was like, wow! And it, it was like a, like a show, like a play, like in the theater, and all the oh, fog awesome. and everything. I was like, 
what the fuck? So they, cool. They, they were like, uh, then recently, when I saw an interview with them, and they said when they were being asked, like, why do you wear those masks? Isn't that so comfortable? No, we want people to enjoy, like, what we have to offer. That's our signature. And we don't want people to focus on our looks and everything. We just want to uh, make them enjoy the music and that performance we have for them. And I was like, that's why I like them. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. something that no, that's true. Do. Yeah, right? they're creating an event, a moment, a special magical thing is happening. Yeah. I think that's like so cool. And uh, yeah, that's those are the moments that like you like. That's what I like to go to at a show. You know, it's like it's not it can be cool and it can transform you someplace. Like if you're at a stadium and you're seeing some band from afar yeah. or something, but you're getting an experience of sitting in a stadium seat, you know, and, you know, it's kind of not as awesome as like a night where you don't know what's going to happen you know and yeah. yeah yeah here we have i think you can explore that place when you come uh so my friends told me about it it's basically like one living room and bands come and play there so but like it's for about i don't know 15 20 people and i was like i just like those small places more yeah. private atmosphere that always turns out to be great you know what i mean so true so true and can you tell me something more about your touring in general? And I have seen that you have also been touring with very good bands, some of your favorites as well. Can you can you describe me your most memorable experience or experiences? How does it work for you? Yeah, you know, the touring, it kind of happens all sorts of different ways where it's like people will ask you to play shows and then it works out that we can play them or we'll be in certain areas. Yeah. We have... Yeah. Um, you know, agents who get us shows in different places and there'll be different promoters or festivals and things that reach out. And you just kind of, you know, we want to take every single show we possibly can because we all yeah. kind of remember the days of like um, not being able to get any shows and stuff. So it's kind yeah, of yeah. You feel really honored when somebody asks you to play. But, um, uh, you know, that doesn't always happen or something. And then you know, sometimes, yeah, we've had the opportunity to play with so many of these bands that are absolutely incredible. And whether they be friends or we played with years ago and then they asked us to go on tour with them, bands like the Black Angels or something or playing some festivals curated by like My Bloody Valentine or something or, you know, which is insane or touring with like Black Rebel Motorcycle Club or all these bands oh my that God, like, yeah. you know, it's so cool and so epic. It's... um you know when you get those opportunities i i can't believe it you know from at least the younger me you know and i'll always kind of think of myself i think in those kind of ways of when you're a fan of all of these things and yeah. you know I'm a music lover too is constantly like buying records and getting into bands and stuff so um it's like sometimes that stuff sort of like blows your mind when there's like some record that you love so much and then you go see them play and there's like seven people there or something you know so yeah I, that I, um that ha that happens you know and whatever and it's i think it shows even the importance of um you know because a lot of times I, i'll notice that there's like bands that even like break up over time oh and, you know, yeah. and so it's like i think if you get the chance to go see a band that you like you should go and yeah, definitely. All these bands kind of need, you know, that sort of makes the event for everybody and kind of helps support all this stuff, which is really cool. Yeah, that's very cool of you to say that. And I'm glad you said that you are you are grateful, you know, to play everywhere you can. That's really nice. And yeah. tell me about, I mean, um, what do you think about interaction with the fans? Do you have all those kind of, you know, uh sign in merch or something like kind of things that you organize? Do you have something like that? Do you enjoy I mean, anything? Yeah. Yeah, you know, we don't organize anything to try to like, you know, in some ways, like I'll see that stuff sometimes where people are trying to like, um, you know, monetize that stuff or something. And we don't really yeah. try to do that. I mean, I just want to, you know, I'm just a person, you know, yeah. it's like other people too. We'll just go out and hang out with people as much as we kind of can. So often yeah. that I'll go stand over by and see what everybody's doing at the show. And, you know, I always want to see what the other bands that we're playing with are like. So I'll always watch the other bands. I'll always be there at the show, you know, and trying to enjoy myself like everybody is kind of. And, you know, that's kind of the fun of, um, 
of being there and their kind of opportunity to, uh, you know, sort of do all of that stuff. And, um, you know, sometimes you get to do that stuff more than others and you get to, you know, hang out in some venues, turn into a dance party and you find yourself at a dance party (laughs) afterwards or something. So, you know, but then sometimes we have to like drive in the middle of the night and stuff like there's those different ideas about um, tour where, you know, it's all just totally chill and relaxed and stuff. And sometimes, you know, you've got long distances to travel or something, but it is chill and relaxed and it's fun. And if you surround yourself with good people, like we have such a great time on tour. So it's really cool. Yeah, that's that's also, I think it's very important, that kind of chemistry you have with other people, especially in the band. That's uh, That's how not only you create like good things, you create extraordinary things, you know, and I have seen, for example, even some, you know, I don't know, some of my favorite horror TV shows or whatever, you know, and uh, you 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 can believe it's like a total mess. It's very good. But then when I was watching how they did it, like we're all super cool friends. But, you know, when you see a TV show, they all kind of almost kill each other. Like it's like you, <laughs> yeah, it's intense. Yeah. you cannot believe like, yeah. you know, how they how they when how they reflect on that. But that kind of chemistry, I think, is super important for the people it really is yeah Yeah, because it's like you know i've been in situations where you're either like working with someone in a real uncomfortable situation or you're not being treated nicely or something at a job or something and you know or you don't you don't get along with some of the people for one reason or another and it's not fun you know what i mean it's like you should get yourself out of that situation if you can or try to change things or maybe try to even heal the relationship with people or something like you know sometimes you know you can kind of you know build upon some of these kind of grudges or whatever and you know it's like people make mistakes things can be kind of you know, tough and whatnot. So it's, there's just, you know, I don't know, there's not enough time to kind of let that stuff affect you too much. So if you can. Yeah, exactly. And now let's see. Uh, So what is interesting, and uh, also to me, it's very cool about you, you have uh, that kind of a do-it-yourself approach to your music and creative uh, things you do. And uh, uh, how does it affect you, you know, and what can you say more? about it i would really like to 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 know more i mean you said a lot of things yeah uh, regarding this issue but i would like to hear definitely a little bit more especially when it's about creating either songs like is it about composing lyrics recording how does it work for you how do you uh, manage all that yeah i mean for me i feel like that's kind of like um you know, I don't know, I, you know, because I went and like, you know, we had a venue at our house for one thing, you know, so I've seen lots of these kind of bands doing things. I've been to lots of like DIY shows and stuff. And, you know, there was just something really awesome and kind of pure about this thing. And, you know, I mean, you know, there's even something romantic about like an author, you know, or someone who, you know, is a sculptor or does something on their own. And you can really like, you know, you're getting something that's actually like formed from their hands and you're getting something that actually, you know, comes from their head and all of these things. And there's just something kind of, I don't know, really awesome and beautiful to sort of see, you know, what all of that struggle and everything was. And so um, I think that's really the right way to make music, you know, and and, that's music that I really like in a kind of cool way. You know, other people, it's like these big productions and there's like multiple people like writing and revising the lyrics and they've been debated and all this kind of different stuff and everything. (laughs) Overthinking, overthinking. Overthinking and and stuff. Yeah, for sure. And it's like, (laughs) I don't know. I like things that are just like a little bit raw and a little bit funky and stuff. You know, I love it when I see like a really terrible ad or something or like a really funky (laughs) hand painted sign or like an off printed t-shirt or something weird or you know you hear some band where something's not even recorded the greatest like you get a sense that like this is something actually happening and you I think you hear you know something that's you know like a passion which is like really cool and you know you kind of can't um you know, I don't there's something really cool about that. You know, I've I've yeah. told sometimes people will say something like, Oh, isn't it a bummer 
you know, why yeah. like AI or something is going to be yeah. creating these things. Yeah. And then I say, you know, that's why I make things that are moronic or so stupid that hey, I wouldn't want to copy these things, you know? So it's like, yeah, you know, you create something a little bit rough and it's authentically yeah. rough. And that's why when you look at like an American Eagle outfit or shirt or like the Gap and it's like that fake printed something or other, you know, it's not like authentic and yeah. you know, kind of goofed or something. It's like, you know, I don't know. I just, I like that stuff. I like it, you know, we're to see the mistakes and the human element of things and, you know, life isn't kind of perfect and, you know, you should embrace that stuff. You know, it's like, yeah. I think those are even the things you kind of remember, like the kind of like goofy moments or the things when yeah. everything kind of got messed up or, you know, or some of that stuff, like those are sort of the charming things about people you know like yeah. sometimes things can be you know a little bit too perfect or something and it makes it forgettable yeah just exactly just like embrace that imperfectness like you know that that's what uh, let's let's say natural like you yeah. know just when you're trying to in everything you do i think uh, i have that uh, problem with you know sometimes with perfectionism like when speaking sure. with, doing my job at least speaking of my you know if it's going to be like and then I'm just like okay I'm just gonna chill a little bit to see if something good is gonna happen turns out it's way better <laughs> you know it, it, it often yeah. is you know it's yeah. like you don't need to hurt yourself with stress or anything like that you know exactly. it's if you can you know yeah. and I think then things kind of naturally sometimes just kind of work themselves out in a kind of way you know which is cool so yeah uh, and that's kind of even part of the sort of fun thing, you know, like, um, and we even try to do that, like in our shows and everything is like, there's so, you know, most of the show is not really that planned, you yeah. know, kind of thrown into what the heck is going to happen. And then yeah. <laughs> I think it leads to something that's really creative and cool that utilizes the space and wouldn't have happened had we like planned everything out perfectly you know and yeah. sometimes you find yourself in a crazy situation and that's i don't know really cool and i like that yeah it's and fun. tell me is it also challenging sometimes is it like you know that you find yourself in a very difficult situation because of that kind of approach you know and how do you deal with that exact situation at the moment like look but i i really like that because it it to me like from my perspective is the best way to learn certain things how we are going to learn if you don't put if you don't go from go out from your comfort zone I, that, that's that's it's so true that's so right? true yeah i mean I, yeah. yeah for sure and i think that you know you a lot of times you sort of need to kind of like let yourself go and maybe yeah. it is what you said where you like go off and think for a second it's almost yeah. like take a deep breath sometimes and you know maybe you know if you were to you know just kind of like you know you kind of almost need to let go of the situation something yeah. bad happens you need to be like you sometimes you need to tell yourself like that's fine or i don't care yeah. You know what I mean? And then once you're not like worried about it or nervous about it, then you just naturally react in the way that kind of like sort of makes sense or you try a different approach or you kind yeah. of do something that, um, you know, sort of gets taken over and you're almost like, you know, not even thinking to yourself, but just sort yeah. of even being guided by faith or something like that. Yeah. Uh, you know, something kind of magical or something. And then, you know, later you'll reflect on that moment. You'll be like, oh, wow, that's wild. Like, you know, I got myself out of that situation or yeah. something, and, you know, oh, that's neat. Now I know like, oh, if I ever like fall flat on my face and my yeah. guitar breaks, here's what happens. You know, yeah. or something. what's the worst thing that happen or something. You know? Yeah. There you go. So um, yeah, I mean, I think that's a thing too. It's like, we are so liberated with a lot of these things that we'll do crazy things you know, destroy our instruments and all of this stuff and and yeah. not be afraid for the amplifiers to come unplugged or for this to go wrong or for someone to sing out of key or, you know, for like the, the drum head to break or something or to have no sticks or whatever it is that would some other people might like freak out about. It's like we've yeah. had, we had those situations happen to us where you blow the power or anything, you know, or yeah. whatever. So, um, you know, you know that it's maybe not so bad. It's like, 
you know, I don't know. It's like if you've ever been like punched in the face or something, you know, it's like it's that first time you get punched in the face where you're like, oh, my God, is what is this going to be like? And they're like, oh, you know what? It's not so bad or like or, <laughs> you know, or to kiss someone or all sorts of experiences like this. It's yeah. like these things like you can build these ideas up in your head, you know, and it's, you know, sometimes. I don't know, you're you're maybe then missing out on what that experience would be or what else could happen or or even being like a judge of like, oh, you know, what may, you know, I don't want to punch someone in the face because I know that's not a positive experience <laughs> or whatever yeah. it is, you know, or something. So, I don't know. yeah, uh, whatever like happens, that's what I, I, I have learned, like harder way, but uh, you cannot definitely control things like you just... Uh, certain things have to happen because of this or that, but that's how you learn. Uh, yeah. Like uh, probably uh, you're, you're going to meet good, you're going to meet bad people, but uh, it's some kind of a lesson or blessing or whatever we call, like you learn through all sure. of these and there are some, you know, because I think that kind of approach, we approach, uh, you know, to everything with a positive kind of thinking, like uh, it can't be bad whatever happens like for example i will mention again that that black metal show i was uh you know, going yeah. to uh so i i i had the new shoes and i was like okay i'm just gonna you know prepare myself to look pretty, oh, yeah. you know, <laughs> sure. like in your shoe. and you know what happened like my feet uh were bloody like i was totally bloody and i was like you know what i said uh, okay, so what? It was worth it. I mean, it's black metal. It's kind of normal, yeah. like some blood. <laughs> no, for sure, yeah. I started joking, and my friends were like, "Your feet are terrible." I, I don't care. So what I what I do, you know, I came home, and then I, you know, I just say, you know, took care of it. But you know what I did next day? I went to the other show. I was barely walking, but I uh -huh. went to the other show and had a great time. And you know what I said? It was all worth it you know so true like, it the, really is because sometimes you fear that uncomfortable situation yeah. like oh you know yeah. i got doused in water or something <laughs> like that you know yeah. but it's like whatever you just need to be like you know what here i am here's my opportunity to go to this show exactly I'm just gonna go to this show with bloody feet or i'm gonna go to this show yeah. you know whatever and, it, and it's fine you know that's you know that's it, it, stuff happens and yeah you know you're, you're probably at least you got to experience the experience and you probably remember this experience yeah. even more that all of that stuff happened so and you get more resistant to pain and other thing is like uh, what i what my philosophy is party now rehab later simple hey, but there. effective that's a good that's a good lesson <laughs> there you go. that's yeah good. <laughs> okay right. so let's see okay let's see uh, i would like you uh us to focus more about your lyrics and how how you write them because i think i mean they're phenomenal sometimes i can be pretty much picky about the lyrics and they don't have to be perfect they just have to hit me you know it can be like whatever it can be a little peep kurt cobain i don't mind i mean it's just a long i feel as long as i feel some kind of you know energy to it I can relate myself to it and I'm feeling what people are trying to transfer onto me that that it's it's good, you know. So I I'm curious about your writing process and the topics you like to deal with. These are topics like about isolation, anxiety, self-doubt, love. There are a lot of things to it. So what can you share with us about that? Yeah, I mean, it's really kind of all of those things. Yeah. And you know, you're just trying to um you know, write these kinds of things which relate to the life that you're living and all of yeah. this stuff. I think it's in some ways, it's just a sort of like connection and that being where, you know, you're sharing your own personal experience and everything you do. And then sometimes that kind of, I think if you're actually like honest with what you're saying and you try to kind of like dig deep and maybe get a little uncomfortable and stuff, then it's even that much more, um, Kind of relatable to other sorts of people and i feel like then you're making like a real kind of connection and and it's kind of weird because you're sort of like writing to you know yourself or your imagination or something and you know it's like a lot of times when we're writing songs is you know we're off on our own doing our own thing you know what i mean so like it's not as much of like you know i'm trying to like 
preach a sermon to people or anything or tell yeah. people any which way. It's more just like, you know, we are just transferring our hopes, dreams, desires, anxieties, and all of this stuff in a song and in a moment which relates to this music that's being played and vice versa both things whether it be like the lyrics are relating to the music or the music is relating to the lyrics and all of that kind of just creates a you know a little like time capsule of of this kind of thing and then you know and I'm, i also you know i'm a kind of a fan of things being um a bit like universal or something in kind of way or like timeless or something so i think that it's like often the lyrics you know we aspire to do that sort of thing to have it be you know maybe it's just like you know there's multiple meanings and stuff and there's kind of like you know multiple ways that these things can kind of travel and since you write a song that happens like over time usually Sometimes you write a song in a moment in five minutes and then it's done, but it'll be, it's interesting to like write an idea for a song. And then like a week later, you'll be like working again on this song. And then, so you then have this opportunity to like weave in other ideas and stuff. And then it kind of changes and shifts a little bit. So you're always, um, you know, getting like a couple of ideas sort of at once. And um, I think, that that you know we often like try to like record and write at the same time and so i think that's sort of like a more uh pure way to write lyrics because you're kind of like creating this whole thing all at once in yeah, this yeah. Is that moment if you yeah. like write um you know a song and then re-record it two years later like you weren't going through the same things that you were going through when you originally wrote the song. So I think that, you know, if you're really trying to do like a personal connection with this stuff, then the thing would change a little bit. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, I, I have heard many different approaches, Yeah, you know, about writing lyrics and when people, some people, for example, they like to write lyrics in the bar. Some people first create the lyrics carefully. They get into a certain kinds of mood, you know, uh then i mean different different kind of things and it's you know what is very interesting what i have noticed that people who create lyrics first they um they seem to be uh very very different from uh other artists of that genre because they have to adjust the music to the lyrics which is not always that easy so they they're yeah. definitely you know creating something different than the others what do you think about that kind of approach I think that can be really cool too. And that way, sometimes it's maybe more like a collaboration or something. Yeah. You can know, be. so it's like, that's kind of neat too, you know? And so it's kind of, you know, these different things kind of come together and make something. So that can be pretty cool, you know? I don't know. It's like all of that. It's kind of even like doing remixes for people or something. Or if you're doing yeah, like yeah. scoring for a movie or something, you know, you sort of then you have more maybe music, which is like a call and response or something. Yeah. You know, you have like two different ideas kind of going on at the same time, which can be really cool, too. It's like, you know, that's, you know, I mean, uh, lyrics can just be fine just as poetry, you yeah. know, or something, and not necessarily have music to them. And then, you know, in some ways, then you're kind of like, you know, creating the like movie version of the book or something where it's like yeah. making like the score to what someone's imagination was. So okay. I think that that's that's kind of cool too. But um I don't know. I usually I think of it in a, in the sense of it like all being one thing. Yeah. And tell me, uh I also wanted to ask um what inspires you uh speaking of lyrics, what kind of lyrics or artists uh in, inspire you the most? And also you can mention writers, books, any form of art or anything else that is, you know, the most inspirational to you, at least at this, at this point or earlier, you can make that comparison, you know, what was earlier, what was now, you know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, I liked a lot of music that was kind of vague and stuff. And so and where I didn't quite know the lyrics and didn't quite understand the ideas. And I think yeah. that... Um, 
that I I like that where it's almost like it's a collaborative effort or a conversation even with the person, you know, and that's even why I kind of even like things, some things like books and whatnot, where you're sort of, you know, you're imagining this stuff that someone is writing. And, um, you know, I think that that's really kind of awesome. I think, um, you know, it's, what it you have to like live life and you have to be doing things to sort of get to be inspired and so you know i think other art kind of drives me to want to create a lot of times but i think the the lyrics and the things which really kind of that i write sort of come from the sort of different things that i do and the situations that i'm in and and the relationships i have with different people and relationships with you know the world or the cities or the places and people and all of this stuff so um i don't know it's you know i think that a lot of times artists make me want to create because i feel like i'm like oh this is so neat i want to you know you read a good story you're like i want to write a story or something maybe that's a common uh feeling for people but you know, if I go to an art museum, I really want to go home and paint or something. Or you go over to, you know, see some incredible interior somewhere and you're like, oh, I want to, you know, put a wallpaper in my house or something or whatever it is, or paint something or, you know, whatever it is. Or, you know, it's like, uh, so I think that that stuff is kind of important kind of motivation for me. But the the lyrics are always, I think, something emotional. Yeah. Is it hard, uh, I mean, or was it uh, ever hard to you to, you know, to uh, transfer something that deep and personal, I mean, just to release it, you know, how did you feel about that, like, uh, in the beginning, like, did did it feel a little bit like, oh, my God, I'm not really kind of comfortable with this, like, uh, what's going to happen, because you're basically pouring your soul it is much more to it than just like lyrics of the song because people build, oh, just that's just a song. No, that's their life. That's their soul. Like they pour their soul into, you know, paper and music and everything. And it's much more to it. Like you you give the soul to that song. Yeah. And uh, is it is it really hard, you know, when you think of it, not just because like, oh my God, what are people going to think? But like, it's like something mine, like like my secret, you know what I mean? Maybe I should have kept it for myself because it's like something that belongs to me, you know? Yeah, I mean, that, that it, it is scary, you know, to do yeah. those things for sure. And I think oh, as like you practice and do things more and more, it becomes easier and easier in some ways. Yeah. But, you know, it also can become harder and sometimes too, because you definitely have like self-doubt you know, and you're even like, oh, I, you know, I want this to, you know, be more, you know, this or that than something that I've done in the past or something yeah. different or something, you know, more insightful or more powerful. And that's to be a tough thing to kind of do and, and sort of create that stuff. And so, um, you know, but I think that I'm glad that people did put that stuff out there and I'm always glad that they have. Yeah. So, I think it's good to just, you know, be trying to kind of sort of do things and uh, hopefully people see and appreciate, you know, when people do put themselves on the line and try to sort of do something. But, you know, I think we live in a world too, where there's like so much stuff kind of being pushed out there and all of this, that you can, in some ways you could take comfort or convince yourself that, you know, maybe not many people are going to see this thing or not many people are going to hear these things so you can just kind of let stuff out but there is something to be said about you know i know people who like make music and never do anything with it you know a lot of times or do this stuff and um you know it's kind of a shame yeah maybe just you know what i have noticed i i've uh, i've been listening a lot of underground bands like i don't know from different countries you know like i don't know bulgaria like uh uh Romania whatever in they turn to be like whoa why why aren't they so huge but then again maybe they're not so huge but that's why they're so good and, but they are so underrated and you yeah. know you know maybe just feel comfortable they feel comfortable that way like they just want to play I know people from the band you know from my place they just want to play for the friends they're just it's yeah. like a hobby to them that makes them happy some kind of therapy and mutual connection with their friends 
And I kind of get it. Like they, they don't want to be that big, but they can't like, they basically make an album like for 10 days, like, or some things like, you know, but they, they just don't, it's like, that's kind of a comfort zone for them, you know? That's, that's I think all of that stuff, you know, it's like, you don't want to like put that much pressure on yourself. And I think yeah. then, you know, you know, that's when, you know, and I've had those kind of thoughts in the past where yeah. like you're on some record label, you know, and then someone is like, you know, you want to like impress the people on this record label or yeah. something. And then, yeah. you know, they have this idea that's not really your idea. And you're like, yeah. you know, should we be doing this stuff? And then you, you're you thinking like, what the heck are you even doing? You know, yeah. even thinking about this stuff, that's nothing to do with like the creation of some kind of cool music or something. And, exactly. You know, and stuff. And that's the stuff which is like really kind of awesome. And, you know, dealing with the rest of that stuff, it is nice to have other people handle, you know, those things, you know, which maybe you don't want to do as a band, like booking shows or some of this, but maybe you do want to do it or whatever. But it's, um, you know, I just, I try to personally like gear as much as I possibly can to kind of giving myself as much time to have as many creative outlets as I can, you know, yeah. and then also try to gear yourself towards having, enjoying your life and stuff, you yeah. know, it's like maybe that, you know, makes it where you, you know, you miss out on some of these things or something, but you're always going to miss out on stuff. Yeah. You know, that's just life and stuff. Yeah. You can kind of, you know, worry about that stuff you know that's just i'd say just be happy with you know what you kind of can sort of make happen and do and and whatnot but it's tough for a lot of bands things get to be more expensive and yeah. more difficult it's tough even a band is comprised of not just one person so it can exactly. be tough being in a band where someone really wants to be famous and someone else just wants to have fun yeah exactly yeah but to me you know uh like, like having a band it, it depends you know what people different people different kind of thinking what they consider to be a success for example to me uh success is if you just push it through the years and you're just proud of it you don't you know i never look at people like oh my god if they're famous or not i'm yeah, like yeah. if they have one follower i don't care if i dig them yeah. i dig them yeah I really, that's awesome so true so, yeah, and that's why I'm also very honored for you, you know, to accept this interview because, you know, certain people are probably, you know, they take care of the likes, they want channel to be popular and everything. And I'm like, okay, you go for it. I mean, it doesn't matter. I'm not going to judge, you know, but they just like people to give chance like to each other. Yeah, you know what I, I mean? Think so. yeah. You know, that that's, that's for sure. why that's how I, I decided to, you know, to get more bands, especially like uh, that I really value and consider to be underrated. Also more female with female members yeah, as go. well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Important, of course. Yeah. yeah. I think it, sure. it's very important in this time when it's all about that, you know, consumerism and, you know, getting more attention. To, I, but if we're speaking about attention, I really need, you know, need the, uh, you have a need to give that to people who really deserve it according to me you know yeah for sure that's yeah. important i think so you know totally yeah. and it's like i think sometimes people forget that like we're the people who are kind of curating the world that we want yeah. to live in you know yeah. it's like you need to put your foot down and stand up for people and you need to be like supportive yeah. of the things that you love and stuff you know it's yeah it's easy to just kind of become complacent and not do that stuff but people need help you know and people need all of that kind of stuff so it's uh it's good when you can just take a little bit even out of your time in the day or when you're making these decisions just yeah. choose the, the the you know something that's gonna help you know some some people out that's a good thing you know yeah, I think people can, you know, help each other a lot and create amazing things. If yeah. they just, if they just, you know, decide to, you know, be grateful and just, you know, to deal with each other, to communicate better, right? Yeah, it's so true. Yeah, it's so true. Yeah. And tell me uh, something about your uh, sound and how do you use pedals and other sonic manipulative kind of a tools? I think it's a very important question because that's something that is truly uh, interesting about your band you know and I, I would like you to say more about it yes um you know you're kind of always sort of searching for something that you've never sort of heard before yeah in a way, or something yeah. 
within like a certain kind of constraints of what sort of goes with your natural body rhythm or something yeah. so it's kind of it's a weird thing to be like uh you know trying to create something that you don't know what it is and you yeah. don't know what it's gonna be and yet you is like aesthetically pleasing to you so it's a lot of um you know, pushing and going out on a limb and trying different things and just being there in those moments to make those decisions. Like, you know, you wouldn't be able to find this sound or whatever if you're not searching for it. So we're kind of constantly trying different things and trying to different create different things and constantly going to shows and talking to people who create things and um, all of this stuff to sort of uh, you know, find some other interesting avenues and takes and things which kind of relate to the stuff that we're already doing. So, uh, you know, this, it, it changes sort of slowly over time all the time. Yeah, yeah. But it's cool for you to say, I mean, cool of you to say that because I think it's, it's very important to mention that because that's very specific for your band that uh, makes you different than other bands your I mean of your genre yeah and also yeah you can add something you, you wanted to add yeah something? we're yeah we're trying to just to push the envelope you know so yeah. what those things are and trying to explore some sort of new territory and and not not like just explore something new just for the sake of exploring something new it's like yeah. we want to find something that is new and cool that you know matches with the things that we really like and hold dear to us so yeah. that's kind of it's like a, a two different things you know i think sometimes people are just trying to find something that nobody else has ever heard before you know yeah. and that is not as interesting as something that nobody's ever heard before and is really incredible so it's like yeah. uh you know you have to kind of find that balance so tell me more about uh, creating your videos because i was pretty much you know blown away <laughs> by your videos you know especially the way you use that kind of uh, you know horror effect but like a real life horror not like horror like um, i don't know some kind of uh, you know movie hellraiser or whatever and because that's what is scary you know like real life horror and how do you combine those kind of visuals with that kind of a story? Is it pretty much challenging thing to do? Uh, is there a secret to it to create such a great video? For example, my favorite uh, is I Disappear. It's like the best, like one of my favorite videos of all the time, you know? Oh, oh cool. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was like, yeah. I... Yeah, yeah, tell me, tell me. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's like some of these videos that come about in all sorts of different ways. It's like yeah. on this most recent record, we had a lot of different uh, video directors who direct horror movies. So it's actually kind of like directly, you know, those people who make these kind of um, underground horror movies. And it kind of, it's sort of, once we started sort of doing that, it made me just sort of realize how much, there's like a relationship kind of between this like horror genre movies and people who are like yeah. underground bands where, you know, they're just making movies of whatever they possibly can of just some friends getting together, doing something crazy and insane and spending the weekend making something and, you know, having a good time while doing it. Same kind of thing of like creating an album with your friends and all of this stuff, you know, so it's there's really and they're, you know, their their movies are just, you know, sometimes they don't come out on, you know, in the theaters or in mainstream platforms, but in smaller theaters or just on like other just like shutter or streaming platforms and stuff. And so it's kind of, um, you know, they do it for the love of all of this stuff. Yeah. You know, you can really just sort of see that where it's like they, you know, or or these people or however it's done, whether it be one of the ones or ones that we've had more hands on experience with, you know, you're just trying to kind of, uh, you know, I don't know. It's like create something that's it's almost like a fun thing you know, that's like, you know, what can you do in that moment? It's similar to like what we talked about as well, too, with like collaboration yeah. stuff or like a remix yeah. or something. Yeah. It's like you now have an opportunity to turn this song into a video. And so yeah. like how do you collaborate and play 
you know, with the song in some kind of interesting way. So yeah, yeah I was, that's, I was that's like, just those kind of ways. Yeah, I was like, when I saw that video and other videos, I was like, I would definitely uh, would like to be in those videos because that's so me. Like I, I find myself, you know, uh, through these videos and definitely recognize myself. If I would do something, it would be definitely something like that, you know. You could make one like, of the next <laughs> The Place to Very Strangers videos. Well, I would love to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 I always Amazing. get yeah i mean if you if you accept me i will i will i'm willing to to to, to participate you know <laughs> oh awesome heck yeah yeah yeah, yeah that's cool i'm very grateful for that you know thank you thank you yeah. yeah and also yeah i also wanted to ask uh about uh yeah you had a great uh, time on the tour as you told me when when we were speaking you're coming here again right this august if i'm correct yeah yeah Okay, so you will tell me more about it. What can we expect? And uh, maybe you would like to import in some other, to, to like to include some other important dates, you know, about other places that people would like to know. Uh, can you can you say something about it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're excited to come back. I think the shows are going to be like really, really cool. We're going to a bunch of other places that we yeah. have never been before. So i um, super excited about that. Um, the shows are going to be, you know, it's going to be a thrill to be kind of back and doing all this stuff. So, yeah. um, uh, you know, we're bringing along some good people with us. It's going to be awesome. In and merch. So, in <laughs> merch, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah, yeah, I was, yeah, I was at that show, I think, yeah, it was last year, uh, also yeah. here in Belgrade. And you were playing with uh, Platombo, right? Yeah. You're also amazing. amazing. So good. Yeah. Like, so good. You know, like all of you were super cool. And also, imagine what happened. I also want to, uh, hey, you know, look at that. show Perfect. this. Yeah. I, I met some girl from Australia. Like, I saw her for the first time and she bought me and her this uh, bag. Oh, and that's awesome. Kind of, yeah. Those kind of spontaneous things that happen at the show. And I'm hoping for more merch. There <laughs> you go. Time. Yeah. Perfect. Oh. Cool. Yeah. Okay. So tell me, uh, for the end, would you like to announce something important that we already, you know, didn't mention in our conversation? Maybe to, as I said, share some more dates about the tour or anything else? <laughs> I don't know. Be kind to your friends and uh, yeah, have a good time. You know, so there's, oh. it's all right. You know, if you want to come see a place to bear strangers, we'll be traveling around and always a good time to come to the shows and um there's i think there's we just had a remix record that came out for the c3u remix album that's really cool uh yeah. has a bunch of amazing people on it like um shoo shoo and uh pete kember and um this band glove from florida and uh, tons of cool bands and people ceremony east coast the other people who are in a place to raise strangers um there's a live at levitation record coming out from uh, the like second show i think with the new lineup it's uh that's it's it's a, it's a cool show it sounds really sick so that's gonna cool. be cool and then yeah we'll see cool cool, cool. i'm glad to hear that and also i suppose you're open to any kind of collaboration if people want to you know uh you know is it only about is it about artwork music or in general like people can contact you you know speaking of that yeah, sure. People can contact me. You know, we're always doing a lot of different things and stuff. So yeah, sure. Reach out. Okay, very cool. So thank you so much for being my guest. Thank yeah. you, of course. Thank you for having me. Thank you. And I'm hoping to see you soon. Yeah, see yes. you in, in yes. August. Yeah. yeah, see you in August. Have <laughs> yeah. a good one. Thank you so much for doing this. Thank you so much for joining me and have a great rest of the day. See you. Excellent. Thank you. Bye. See you. Bye.